Recently, we showed off the Insta360 1R with both the one inch Leica mod and the 360 mod. Today, something similar, but also different in many ways, the Insta360 1X2. If you're new here, hello, my name is Lee. I share videos on this channel every week on all things photography and about photography as a lifestyle. I always just have a camera in my hand, whether it is something like this or something larger, like those cameras on my shelves back there. Subscribe if that sounds interesting to you. I also have long form courses on photography, things like the basics of photography, classic portraiture. And right now I'm working through a course on landscape photography. If you would like to see those courses, members have access to all of them. You can learn more about channel membership at the link in the description of this video. While the 1R is modular, the X2 could be confused as something that's single purpose since it's not modular. It's all one piece. It's about the size of a candy bar, <laughs> but it has lenses on both sides and some tricks up its sleeve. The reason I say that the X2 is not single purpose is when it comes to 360 degree video, we think of it as all purpose. In a few moments, Raymond is going to hop in and talk about how that flexibility works. But before that, I wanna go over some of the highlights with you. There are various action cameras out there and that one big name that everyone thinks of is certainly good, but Insta360 has made a real splash in the industry and they keep getting better and better. Speaking of that splash, <laughs> This camera is waterproof down to 10 meters. It can do 5.7K video and it has stabilization on a level that we have only previously seen on the Insta360 ONE R when using its 360 degree mod. Also, four microphones on board to bring in the audio from all directions. That's the thing with 360 degree video, you're capturing everything. So if you aren't keeping it steady, if the camera's kind of moving around at all angles, it's irrelevant. You're capturing all of the surroundings all of the time. So what about the footage? How do you watch it? If you use the YouTube app on a mobile device or a VR headset, you can actually look around the environment while you're watching the footage, or you can watch it once at one vantage point and then shift your view and watch it again. Either way, it really takes you there into the environment. This can be amazing on even a simple walk or run or on your bike, or if you're into more extreme sports or you know your way around a hot air balloon, <laughs> the results can be stunning. And it allows you to share those experiences with people who haven't or can't do some of those things. In fact, I actually watched a YouTube video from a runner that I follow where he held this camera out on a selfie stick during a, a trail run with his dog, and it was so much fun to watch. For me, I like sports, but I'm not exactly an extreme athlete. Yoga, hiking, running, biking, those are my speed. Although Raymond did recently get me a stand-up paddleboard. <laughs> so yeah, pretty slow and steady, but at least I don't have to worry about getting the camera wet. Extreme sports aside, we have learned that the flexibility of a 360 camera opens up that second way of using the footage quite nicely. More and more, some of the non 360 degree footage that you've seen on this channel is actually from a 360 degree camera, but you'd never know. What this camera allows you to do is to gather footage and then creatively choose later on how you'll present it to the world. You can turn an ordinary sunset shot from a fixed position into a creative pan or time-lapse using either the Insta360 Studio app or editing software like Final Cut Pro or Adobe Premiere. You can use keyframes to pan and move around the footage as though you'd been shooting with an expensive Steadicam or a gimbal. But unlike those, you can decide later to use the same footage in a completely different way because you have it all all 360 degrees, up, down, left, right. The flexibility is endless. <laughs> and I've only just scratched the surface with my own use of it. I can think of so many different ways that I wanna use this. My partner in crime, Raymond, took to 360 degree video instantly. <laughs> I'm gonna bring him in to show you some of the flexibility that you can get when working with this camera on the fly or in the app with your footage. Hi everybody, I want to show you two things today. First, in Insta360 Studio 2021, I want to show you how you take 
fairly raw 360 degree footage like this, pick a subject and then have it work like a regular camera that's following the subject. The advantage being, again, you don't have to compose um, on the fly. You can simply have the camera there and compose later. Then we'll do some keyframing in Final Cut Pro to show you how we did some of the pans and zooms and such that we did in Lee's review. So what I did is Lee and I went to the park and she ran around. And what we'll do here is we'll go to free capture. This is going to turn the 360 degree footage into footage that is more like you're used to from a regular camera. There's me at the bottom holding the giant selfie stick. You can actually see it in the shadow even though you can't see it in the video. And then there is, uh, there's Lee. So let's do this. Let's click on this tracking icon. And what I do is I make a box around her and then we start tracking. And right now the software is going through the exercise of going through the video and staying tracked on her and I'm just following her. I'm not moving the camera around. I'm sort of heading in her direction and she's doing her thing and we'll let that just go for a moment. I'll stop track and then we'll go back and we'll see what the footage does once that tracking starts. You can see it down there on the timeline. It started tracking her now. I'm just walking straight. I'm not moving the camera at all and it's keeping the composition pointed in her direction. So that's very useful if you're doing your sport or adventure with the camera, just have it on, just have it there. And when you're reviewing the footage and you see points of interest, you can do exactly what I just did. Now there's a time and a place when you're integrating footage into a video like this Final Cut Pro timeline for this review, you can export from Insta360 Studio into a few different formats. One being ProRes, which I really like because you're going to get the maximum quality available. And what I did in this case, this doesn't look like a 360 degree clip, but I actually brought a 360 degree ProRes clip into Final Cut Pro. Then in Final Cut Pro, let's go to my first keyframe, is you can set how you want this to be composed. You get controls here. So instead of pointing straight down to start in this clip, we could start here. We have a few axes of control here. And then actually one thing I like to adjust and tweak sometimes is field of view. You go too far out and look what happens. So you've got to, got to do something like that. Let's pan that down. So we can start there. I've already set keyframes here and we can go to, well, let's just play that and let's see what happens. That require stabilization. So in this case, she's walking into the frame before I had it set up where she walked out of the frame. And now it gets to the next keyframe. You can see the numbers advancing over here. So let's change that second one. And instead of pointing to where she ends up, let's pan over here, I don't know, up to the sky. We're just messing around here. And now let's play it that way. These Insta360 cameras are what we grab now. Of course, he's not replacing my... Let's grab that first keyframe. Now, instead of pointing at her, it's going up to the sky. And then I had another keyframe. I like to mix things up. Where it goes back down. And then it's going to go over to the right. So what's cool about this is basically... You know, if you haven't done keyframes, there's a world of discovery, but basically you go to where you want it to end up and then Final Cut Pro will manage the transitions to go from one vantage point to another. And again, with 360, you have the full freedom of the 360 degree footage to work with as though you can go back in time and just recompose from the environment again, because you've captured everything. It's pretty neat. And I just wanted to give you a taste of some of the potential of 360 degree footage when you're putting a video together like this one. Thank you, Raymond. It seems like every time we go somewhere interesting, Raymond asks me if I have the 360 degree camera. And if I don't, I can usually track it down on his mountain bike. It may be a little muddy, but never worse for wear. Taking a closer look at the body, you can see that it is super simple power button, record button, 
and a touch screen so that you can look at different compositions on the fly. Battery compartment, which is also where the micro SD card lives, charging port, and a tripod mount. And some accessories. This is where things can get interesting. This cage gives you a standard GoPro mount to use with a seemingly unlimited number of mounting accessories from a number of brands. This is how we affix the camera to our bikes or to the suction cup mount. Just using the tripod mount, there are a couple of selfie stick options, both of which are magically invisible with your footage. But this extended edition is amazingly long. It can extend to up to three meters. You know all those places that you want to bring a drone but you can't? This might be your solution. It really looks like smooth drone footage. And there are a lot of other accessories too, like the bullet time cord. I particularly like their tripod. I've even used it for other larger cameras because it's compact but sturdy. Back to drones for a moment. As Raymond showed, it is a whole new way to think about cinematic drone footage because you just fly near the interesting stuff and then later you can add whatever creative pans or rotations and stabilization that you think would make a good story. Depending on the situation and the conditions when you're flying that drone, you might not be thinking cinematically at the time. Frankly, it makes the non 360 degree cameras on our drones feel kind of limited. Now a word of serious caution. Not every drone out there can or should handle a payload like this. We use this on our older Mavic Pro in areas where there are no other people, just in case. It has performed very well. The Mavic was easily able to handle the additional weight, but as with anything, use your judgment for your particular configuration and always fly safely. One thing that I'll say is that if you're into action camera footage or vlogging and B-roll footage, once you do these with a 360 degree camera, it's tough to go back to an action camera with a fixed field of view. And anything that requires stabilization, these Insta360 cameras are what we grab now. Of course, these aren't replacing my fancy full frame cameras, but they just make it easier to capture something different than we're used to. I like to mix things up to keep my creative juices flowing. Thank you to Insta360 for sending this. This and the Modular 1R have become cameras that we grab on an at least weekly basis for work and for play. That being the case, if you do have any questions, let me know and we'll make sure you get the answers. And actually, we're still fairly new to this whole 360 thing. So if you do have any 360 degree video tips or tricks, definitely share those in the comments below. Like this video if you found it helpful or entertaining. And thank you for watching.